I'm Linus. I am one of the co-founders of uh, Flatter. And Flatter is a social micropayment service, meaning this small button you see. You put it on your web page, your blog, whatever. You combine what you do with your fans. They click the <coughs> button and you get money. <laughs> Doesn't it sound easy? Yeah, now you can leave. No. <laughs> so the idea here today is to talk about some mechanics for using our service and any other type of crowdfunding service. Um, but we should start with explaining what Flutter really is. And we have a small video, like 145, uh, that explains it's pretty good. So I'm going to show the video and then we will continue from there. On the internet, you can create or take part of content. When you create, there's not really a good way to get money for the content. And when you find something you like, there's no good way to show love for it. This problem is universal. For bloggers and their readers, musicians and their listeners, photographers, film creators, programmers, and so on. So we created Flatter to solve this. This is how it works. Every month, the Flatter user pays a small fee. Let's compare it with birthday cake. When you have a cake, you want to give slices to the people you like. Flatter helps you do that. If you've created something, you can add a Flatter button to your content. Or if you find something you like, and there's a Flatter button besides the content, you click it. Each button is a counter showing how many people are willing to give cake for the content. At the end of the month, your cake is sliced in as many pieces as you clicked Flatter buttons. Each slice is then given to the correct content creator. If you click 10 buttons, the 10 creators will get a tenth of the cake each. If you click 100 buttons, the 100 creators will get a hundredth of the cake. The slices might be small, but everyone's slices will all add up. Or as we say in Sweden, Många bäckar små blir en stor å. As a creator, you will get money you've never got before. As a consumer, you can help creators out with just a small click. If you haven't guessed it, flatter is a wordplay of flatter and flat rate. With a flat rate fee, you can flatter people. So this is how our system works. Uh, it's a bit backwards. It tries to remove the mental transaction cost of actually giving some little bit of money because using like PayPal donate to give one, two dollars is much too, way too much work so people don't do it. Um, we had have great success in Europe, mainly in Germany, um, even though we are a Swedish company. Um, and we are not here just to talk about this tonight. We are actually, as Sloan mentioned yesterday, uh, the entire conference is flatterable. You have a QR code on your badge, and you can scan the QR code with our Flatter application to flatter any of your that are here. So if you talk to someone that gives you good advice or you like the person, you can flatter him. You can also, inside our app, flat, flatter all the sessions, like this session, or me as a speaker. And this is a test of, of trying to use our system in an offline or real world situation. Normally, the button is used on web pages for creators and open source software and so on. If you want to try the system, we have vouchers. We actually get some free money. That's always nice. And we are standing outside. Me and Seem here is blogging hysterically right now. And you can talk to us and ask anything. Um, so let's get into the topic at hand. And this is mostly about making you the ketchup. You know, ketchup, everybody loves ketchup. Ketchup makes everything better. So if you can ga be the ketchup, you're probably much more likely to have an iPhone 5 from your friends. And I'm very, very glad that the iPhone 5 doesn't exist yet. Because then you have some time to collect money. Uh, but let's roll back a bit and, and start with why do we even have this discussion? Why aren't you just selling this, the stuff you do? Like people always done. And something happened when the internet arrived or landed in our laps or whatever. And that's um, that um, <coughs> content has been commoditized. 
And that means that commodities are sold to the lowest bidder, or the lowest, <coughs> the one who has the cheapest commodity will sell it. If you combine that with the good distribution, that costs zero. The lowest price is zero. And that's what happened. You can find anything on the net for free. The also awful pirate here might help you. But it, it's, not, it's not just pirated material. You used to buy newspapers. Now you get the news for free on the net. You used to buy software. Now there's open source or Google. They does it for free. It's very, very easy to find information for free, like Wikipedia. It's a perfect example. It's very hard to um, monetize content. If you have a good product, that doesn't mean you get money anymore. Sure, you need to have a good product to, to do anything and get any money, but it, it, it doesn't mean that you can sell it. And that's something that has changed. So what could we do instead? If we can't force people to pay, we can't have a fixed price. Because then people will go for the free stuff. And that doesn't mean that they aren't willing to pay, but if you have like dirt, expensive and free. Like most people think is the, that's, that's the two cases. People will go for free. And if you have no system for paying if you want to pay, then people can't pay even if they want to. So that's their pay what you want system that's been used in many cases. So if we can't force people to pay and we can't have a fixed price, then we have to ask people to pay and let them pay whatever they want. And assume that any payment is better than none. And of course, any payment is better than none. And this might sound a bit sad, like revolutionary or something, but absolutely, absolutely not. Ask any independent producer that makes anything if it's possible to force people to pay before they have the content. Try and, if you're a musician, make a CD, go downtown, try to sell it without saying who you are or what the music are. Of course, it doesn't work. If you are going to force people to pay before they get the content, you need to have a prior relationship with the customer. We go to the movies, we buy the movie ticket because we have seen that the director is good and they, the actors, we, we like them. If they were like, movie, and a big question mark. <laughs> Nobody would go there. And that's what happens if you're an independent producer and, and put your music, music in line and says, you have to pay before you can listen. Doesn't work. So this is nothing new. And what's happened is actually that the independent producer and all of the media, established media, have ended up in the same boat. It's kind of hard to get the people to pay for content or product. So then it's the question, what, how do we solve this? What do we do instead? And sure, if we want to make people pay even though they want to, we have to add a lot of stuff on top of the good product. Okay, a product needs to be useful, entertaining, serve as a purpose, easy to use. So if you're producing content, of course people have to, has to like it. But they also has to like you, or the company, or the product. So I tried to make, I made a Google search for Apple tattoo. And there are a huge bunch of people tattooing Apple's logo. There's actually pretty hard to find a tattoo of a normal apple on, the, on someone on Google. And that's, it's a product, and people care about the product. If you can get people to care about your product or your content, then you win. I did the same thing for Nokia. Nothing. Because people don't care about Nokia. Who was the CEO of Apple? Steve Jobs. Who is the CEO of Nokia? No. So, how do we get people to care? Or about you, your content, or uh, the product itself? We have to add a bunch of stuff on top of what we normally do. And here is, is what we learned. We've been doing the Flutter product for like one and a half year. And this is how you become the catch-up. First, try to have personality. If you have personality, you are real. People will care about you if you are real. The time of the boring gray corporation, the big buildings, the business suit is over. Even the big companies want to be personal. personal. Uh, people care about the peacock more than the dub. That's why Apple put up Steve Jobs. He was somebody. 
Maybe you didn't like him, but he was somebody. And it's much more easy to get people to care about people than something else. Try to make the consumer or the user of the product a part of something. Because if you're a part of something, you add to the whole. Uh, you, there's meaning of you being there. This guy thinks that if he leaves, the circle isn't complete anymore. So that's a very good mechanic. It's like contributing, even though you might not do that, but make people feel like they are contributing. Making their choice of getting your stuff, consuming your product, or using your whatever you do as a choice, something uh, that makes a difference, becomes a vote for something good. A very good example here is, is the company Tom's Shoes. Maybe you heard about it. Tom's Shoes makes shoes, they sell shoes. But if you buy one pair of their shoes, they will also give one pair of shoes to somebody who needs shoes, like kids in third world countries. So by buying Tom's Shoes, you actually make a difference. You still get the shoes you want, but you're making a difference. People like to add to their karma. When people give money to charities, they normally do it anonymously. They put some money in a bank account somewhere and they feel like, mm, I'm a better person. If you buy the pin in the store, you also give money to charity, like cancer research or something. But you also buy the right to put it on your jacket and display for the world that I'm a great person. And that's how it is with badges and making it visible on the net. Um, that you're a good person. Greenpeace had this buy a part of their new boat. Um, very, very, very powerful people likes to, like to boost their own ego. <laughs> Try to become a friend, or at least a friend in mind, because people care about friends. You don't care about strangers. If you had two people doing the ex wanting to do the exactly the same thing, one was your friend, the other one was a random person on the street. Who would you support? So try to make, get people to see you as a friend. Give the inside scoop, the secrets, talk in a personal way, your own voice, uh, write people as they, as you would write letters to anybody. Try to find a mission or a common enemy with your fans and followers. It's much better to stick your neck out and then to be bland. And if you stick your neck out so much that there are people that start to hate you, it might be even better. Because Marilyn Manson, he understood that for every mother chasing him, saying he's the devil, there will be hundreds of people saying, woohoo! <laughs> it's a very, very good mechanic. If you have something that people can line up behind you, you get your own personal army, and your own personal army will do as you say. Try to find a goal, somewhere you want to reach. I want to do this, support me so I can do this. Um, it could be going that trip somewhere to be able to write the book or the blog post about the place. Um, Kickstarter, for example, is using this uh, only this mechanic and nothing else. If you find a reason to support you, there will also be very much, much easier to find people that want to support you. And then we have the opposite. And that's flaunting your history. Wikipedia doesn't say, support us, we want to change the world. They say, support us, we had, have changed the world for 10 years. We need to continue this. By looking at their history, you believe that they will continue. It earns them trust. You can use the same mechanic. If you've been blogging for five years, show that you have been blogging for five years. If people support you, you they probably believe that you will continue to blog instead of buying booze and fancy car or something. <laughs> and then we end up on the absolutely most important one, at, at least to me. Um, and that's transparency. If you can show who you are, why you do it, how much money you have got, what you've spent with the money, why 
you all want the money and what to do with them. The more you are willing to, to say, the more people will trust you because what you're saying is the truth. The truth is always good. The example here would be, do you trust a charity organization that has closed books and just say, we are doing good stuff? Or would you trust them, the charity organization who has open books displaying everything they do? Of course you will trust the, the second one more. So then the question, does this really work? Sounds logical? Yeah, sure. Can we use it? Yes, you can. Here are um, some examples when it has worked. So the first one is the Humble Indie Bundle. They have done three of these. And it's a collection of five independent games from independent game studios. That means game studios nobody had heard about, no prior trust relationship. Uh, they, did, they sell it for one week, and it's a pay what you want system. You have to pay something, but it can be 10 cents. And as you can see, it's been working pretty well. And most of these game producers had earned more money on this system than they have done selling their games any other way. So this can show that the pay what you want system can be the paywall any day. You just need to do something that people cares about and something people want and wants to support. The next example is Diaspora. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, this was some guys that thought that Facebook is too, there's too much easy issues with Facebook. There are privacy issues. You don't own the content you put on Facebook. Facebook owns it. Uh, they control our entire lives and know what we do. We want to do an open alternative to Facebook. So they pledged money on Kickstarter. And they said, we need $10,000 to get this project uh, done. And they got more than $200,000. And here is, is, it doesn't only show that people want to support stuff they find important, it also shows that people are willing to do almost anything to support something they want to be a part of. Like the last people who gave money, did they really think that their money would make a difference? They needed 10,000, they all have got almost 200,000. Ah, let's give some more. Even Mark Zuckerberg gave a huge bunch of money for this. I was like, hmm, strange. And it means that if you find something that people sign off to, they are willing to do almost anything to make it happen. Third example is our own system. When we started Flutter, we were thinking like, okay, we have two, mainly two types of people who are using the system. Either they are the one who wants to get money or the ones who wants to give money. Uh, it should be easy to find the people who wants to get, get money. We will get huge amounts of people who want to get money and no people who wants to give money. Not true. Not at all. It's very easy to find people who want to give money. The hard part is convincing the people they want to give money to that there actually are people willing to pay for the content. It's like, I do this for fun in my spare time. Does any, anyone really see value in this? No, that's strange. But if you think about it, people say that there are a relationship from 1 to 99 uh, when it comes to creator, uh, consumer. If there are 10% of all the consumers are willing to pay for it, it's still one to 10. And the last example is this guy. He would probably kill me for doing that portrait of him. <laughs> it's, he is called Tim Pritlov. He's a German podcaster. And they were talking about podcasts and the other night in how stuff works, how to monetize uh, podcasts. And he actually makes about two and a half thousand dollars each month from Flutter. That combined with standard donations like PayPal is actually his livelihood. And you don't need to donate or pay to, to listen to his podcast. It's absolutely free. But he has that many people wanting him to do the podcast that he actually gets money enough to do it and nothing else. He started it like five years ago and thought that I can make me do podcast one, two days a month, a week, sorry and do some consulting and some seminars and stuff so I can afford doing the podcast. Now he doesn't do any consulting, any seminars anymore. And he says that three years ago he never thought it was ever possible. And apparently it is. So to conclude this, um, there are three, two, three conclusions. The first one is that 
I, you probably heard that everything on the net should be free. Everybody thinks that everything on the net should be free. We don't believe that at all. That's not, absolutely not true. People don't think that. Free doesn't mean that people don't want to pay. It's a mantra that probably has been shouted out there by the copyright industry because they need a reason to force people to pay. The second one is, if you want money from your supporters or your fans or anyone, you should think of it as a reward rather than a payment. If you think of it as a reward, you're tapping into the mindset of the people giving you money because you, they see it, you have done something good. Here is a reward for your work. Not, they are not saying you have done something good, I need to pay you. So think of it as a reward. That's the, the mindset, then it gets so much easier. All the stuff I've talked about before becomes kind of logical. And then the last one, and this is a German guy who said, um, when we were talking about the flatter system, he said, I don't pay for what I got. I pay for what I will get, the things that can be made because I paid. And I think that sums it up perfectly. It says that people do understand that paying could make a difference, and it does make a difference. And I'm done. <laughs> it's a question mark, so I guess it means that you can ask me questions. Any questions? You, you, yeah, you, you could use the, you have been able to use the service worldwide from day one, uh, and Germany popped up as the main country directly. Um, not so you didn't do any local country advertising or anything? No, you no. You put it on the web. Yeah. And for some reason, Germany, I mean, you have to maybe try to hire someone or try to do your own investigation to see why the people of Germany have this, you know, about their character or. It's probably a combination of factors. We had some early, early press about it. Uh, there's a very uh, visible discussion in Germany on how to fund um, journalism and newspapers because uh, they have like been able, forced to lay off two thirds of their of their staff. Uh, and then the newspapers and the media outlets has used their own communication channel to discuss this problem. And then Flutter has been come up as a one of the many solutions or, or thinkable solutions <coughs> to this kind of problem. Um, maybe Germans are um, kinder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, one theory is also um, there's a conference or uh, ecosystem or article founder uh, kind of launched it and it had a bunch of bloggers who then went back to the media discussing it, adopting it and because it was through the adoption of one community, uh, which then allowed it to grow, flow over to other overlapping communities. So uh, we, we got the good initial crowd to adopt it, and then it started to grow. Uh, the question, of course, is how do we replicate that in the US? So what, what's the first niche? Uh, and in, in Germany, is there a specific category that <coughs> As all new internet technology, it's people who do technical stuff. Yeah, so uh, it's very easy to integrate the button into a blog system like WordPress. It's just a plugin. Um, and if you blog or talk about technical stuff, a new technical solution is, is always something people also want to try. Um, so that's, that's, of course, one area. Uh, but all areas where people have a, an urge to support, uh, like politics, um, where people have like not extreme but opinions about stuff. Um, open source software, uh, we have huge success with open source software because that's a, an area where people th really think open source software is, is very important and it's very, very hard to, to pay for it or support it. Uh,
Yeah, it's, it's super simple. You, it depends on what platform you have your content on, uh, but we have several plugins for, for many content platforms. You sign up, then you download the plugin that's most suitable, or you follow the guide that's most suitable for where you have your content. Um, I'm not really sure it's uh, useful to show everybody because it's the, the use case is rather different depending on where you have your stuff. But we can, we can show you if you want to know after. I think you were first, maybe. We take a, a cut of, of um, what people pay. So we take 10%. Normally we take 10% if you don't have a charity account. And that's when you receive money. So you don't pay anything if you don't receive any money. Uh, yeah, that was my initial question, but I want to ride on that. In the United States, you would be considered a startup company. Yep, we are. Do you uh, solicit venture capital to yep. start your company up? We have VC capital from, Lon from London. Are you into it or you need more money or how is it going? Because it looks pretty set up right now. Yeah, we are. It's, it's very good right now. <laughs> yes? Uh, what for a, for a, uh, a user, I mean a, a person who wants to donate or give money, what is their setup process like? Like how, how, how I'm just curious, like how high is the bar of entry for a person to set it up? Yeah, it's, that's the, as we have like turned the system, it's a kind of backwards system, like you said in the video, you first decide how much you're willing to spend and then you spend it to get the, trans the mental transaction cost of actually spending money down to as little as possible, like fa clicking a Facebook like button. Um, signing up is the, that's where the hurdle is. The first step is, of course, getting people to understand this cake analogy thing. Um, and the second one is that you need to fund your account, you, you pick up your credit card, you use your PayPal account or something, and then you put some money into the system. It's like topping up a bus card, or I'm not sure if you have these systems in, in the US, but. Um, so that's, it's, it's fairly easy, of course, but it's, that's where the hurdle is. When that's done, it's just one click. And then how much loyalty It depends. Uh, so you set up the monthly amount from two euros and up, uh, and then we divide that exactly uh, in equal pieces for every button you have clicked. So you can, if you have clicked like 25 buttons and you think your two euros is too little, you can just hire the amount that month. <coughs> Yeah, we are discussing partnership with lots of lots of places, uh, we, and we have some partnerships also uh, that has integrated the system into their settings and so on. Uh, you can use it easily with SoundCloud, for example. Uh, once again, what's the incentive for someone to use this system if they want? You said it looks like your incentive is your pitch is that here's your chance to give money to the things that you like. Yep. Say I use a service like called Reptel. I know the service that when I use Reptel, I can make long distance phone calls to whatever. That's what they're giving back to me. I use my credit card, I top it up for $10 or whatever, 10 euros. Yep. How do you get somebody to use Flatter to say, okay, I'm giving, I'm swiping my credit card for $10, now what am I getting back out of that service? What you, is the service yeah, from, from our side, you don't, don't get anything. So we can't offer anything except the ability to support the creators you like. So if you support the, the blogger or Tim, for example, or some kind of musician, uh, you know that if I support this, it will mean I will get more music or I will get more blog posts. And or the, the fans of Tim, for example, he, they, of course, he's, he's saying that you, I, my livelihood is you supporting me. If you don't support me anymore, I need to stop doing this. So it's not a service. It's, um, <coughs> But not everybody wants to do long distance calls either. Sure. <laughs> I have no reason to do long distance calls. <laughs> but everybody has something they care about. So if I want you to give you five minutes to do write down three things on the net you have seen that you know about that you want to support, you will probably have no problem whatsoever doing it. 
So the, the goal is for this service to be universal, meaning that anybody can support anything with it. That's why we're doing it here offline with the sessions, showing that this might in the future even be, be possible to do with your favorite cafe or your favorite exhibition. Yeah, um, we do like this, that's one thing. Uh, but that's, that's exactly the, the, the basic problem we have. Uh, and that's what I meant with there are easy to find people who want to support something. It's, it's harder to convince people that they actually want to be supported. Um, so we are building a system that makes it possible to support people that doesn't include the system. So for example, you can flatter any Twitter user. Um, soon it will be possible to flatter any GitHub repository or any Facebook user, uh, any email address. Um, so we are trying to get around those those problems. I think there was a hand like, no? There's hands everywhere. I think. The <laughs> Um, probably not long at all. This is, this is um, what we are doing in, is not rocket science, except this part, because it hasn't been done before. So it's, it's a lot of testing. Uh, um, for example, is it possible to link a, a Facebook page to a certain account? I'm not sure. We have to check that. Um, but it shouldn't be very long. Uh, yes? Exactly. So there's, you're saying I want to flatter this Twitter user. So when they sign up, you automatically flatter them. Uh, as a, uh, a donor or giver, do you stay anonymous? If you want to. Yeah, because I know a lot of people want to support somebody, yep. but they don't no. want that person to see that they're. they're uh, uh, yep, so that's totally up to you. Um, we don't. We don't say any numbers. We don't give out who you are if you don't explicitly say that you want to put it to me. Oh, any charity can sign up um, and for the service and put the button on the web if they want to. We have. It depends on the on the. It actually depends on the type of charity. Yeah, here in the U.S., I know that kind of everything is charities. It doesn't work like that in Sweden, so yeah. No, it's only a cost if you receive money. So if you don't receive money, we, you don't pay anything. And then we take part of what the money you receive. Yeah, so it's like a normal payment service. You, the, the person receiving the money takes the cost of the transaction. Yeah, exactly. No, not me, but the company. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a hand back there first. Uh, Tax-wise, the money that you're receiving, is it by 1099s, or what is it that, uh, what is the income? Oh, the, it, we are just a, a we just, um, like PayPal or a bank, we just move money between users. So that's totally up to the people, depending on why they get it. So it's the company they have to, and so on. At, at the moment, no, no. Um, but we are uh, discussing those kind of mechanics, um, and we are probably going to implement some, some of them. We don't want to create a paywall system because we think this is the alternative to a paywall system, um, but some kind of feedback loop um, where it's possible to maybe treat the people supporting it at least a little bit. One more. Your 
Yeah, oh, oh yeah, of course. And uh, the only the only real problem uh, to adding this button you saw uh, is when the uh, content site doesn't allow you to add code to your uh, page. So, like, it's not possible to do on a normal Facebook page uh, or a YouTube account uh, because they don't allow you to add images or JavaScript or so on. Um, but if you have your own site um, and any site that makes it possible to like change appearance of the of the system, like change theme and so on, um, it's it's possible. It's also quite easy to incorporate in like add these services and uh, share that on, on WordPress.com and so on. One more question. Yeah, exactly. So, so how flattering at the moment, no, but that's how it's going to be soon. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> that's the, that's the biggest problem we had. We are handling money, and then there's a huge bunch of laws and regulation and and certifications and shit you need to have. <laughs> that's yeah. I'm not going into that, but that's that's a, that's the biggest problem we have. So that's the point, that's the idea, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. <laughs>